these passengers, many of them leading airline executives, are preparing to board a mock-up of Lockheed's big new L-1011 TriStar jetliner. The event is one of several L-1011 food service tests. This one is a joint effort of Lockheed and participating airlines to perfect major advances in meal service for air travelers of the 1970s. In the luxurious full-scale cabin mock-up, eight stewardesses representing four airlines are ready to demonstrate the L-1011's food and beverage service system. They will serve cocktails and a typical airline dinner to the 250 passengers during a simulated 90-minute flight. This is the program control center. All phases of this test are being covered by closed-circuit television and recorded on videotape. Airline executives and official observers have gathered in a nearby room to observe the proceedings on TV monitors. The videotape recording will provide food service specialists a permanent record for detailed study and analysis. This is an operational test of the L-1011 food and beverage service system being conducted on February 26, 1970. The operation will include galley loading and unloading, passenger boarding and deplaning, and all functions in the galley as well as those in the cabin. We're coming up on time to start, three seconds, two seconds, time zero, start. The action starts from a simulated commissary truck parked adjacent to the L-1011 galley compartment. The galley door is opened and a loading bridge is dropped in place from the truck bed to the galley floor. The bridge provides a continuous even transit for carts and crewmen. The bridge guides the carts to permit rapid passage into the galley. In keeping with the L-1011 quick turnaround capability, food and beverage carts are boarded through a galley loading door that is completely separate from passenger boarding or cargo operation. The large fuselage makes it possible to locate the galley beneath the passenger cabin floor. Two elevators or lifts operate between the galley and the above cabin. Here, one of the two commissary men uses the lift to deliver dinner beverage modules to the three service centers in the cabin. The supplies for the first class section are contained in a small cart. The cart is parked beneath the forward service counter and locked in place. Two or more service modules are stowed at the mid-cabin and aft centers. Each service area features coffee brewing equipment, various supplies, and beverages. Ladies and gentlemen, your TriStar is ready for departure. Passenger boarding will be through gates one and two, according to your color-coded boarding passes in the order that they are called. Will passengers holding green boarding passes now enter through gate two? And passengers with yellow boarding passes, please enter gate one. Passengers enter the cabin through two of the six L-1011 double-width doors and move to their seats along two boarding aisles. All seats, 50 first class and 200 coach, are occupied on a reserve seat basis. Below deck, galley loading continues. Two stewardesses are now on duty in this aerial kitchen, checking supplies and equipment. This test introduces a highly efficient method for handling frozen entrees in airline service. The entree casseroles, now being placed in the galley freezers, were blast frozen at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit by O'Brien Spotorno Mitchell of San Francisco. When needed, these entrees will be cooked or reconstituted in the galley infrared ovens. One of many advantages of this system is that any unneeded servings can remain in the galley freezers and be returned to commissary refrigeration at the end of the flight for use at another time. Here, trays containing coach entrees, grilled filet mignon, are placed in designated ovens. 
The push-button controls and automatic timing of the L-1011 version of the patented Foster Infrared Oven permit frozen entrees to be brought from minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit to serving temperature in 15 to 18 minutes. This test imposes an unusual requirement for handling coach class entrees. Food economy is emphasized by simulating a topping off exercise for late arriving passengers. And to demonstrate galley flexibility, only four of the five ovens are used. One oven will be loaded a second time. The galley has a capacity for 18 serving carts but for this test, 16 are used. Six for beverages and 10 for food. As the food carts are secured, the cart holding ovens are heated by connecting the cords. After the liquor carts are aboard, the commissary men leave the galley and simulate closing the galley door. And that completes the galley loading operation. In this test, a representative completion of the galley loading function was prevented by a malfunction of the lifts, which are of improvised knock-up construction. However, data obtained from other test performances show that the L-1011 galley can be loaded for a one-meal flight in 10 and a half minutes by two men, with one of them servicing the cabin units in four and a half minutes. As passengers continue to board the airliner, the attention of first-class passengers is directed to the choice of entrees on the menu, filet mignon or chicken carmen in casserole. Menu selections are collected, and this information is phoned down to the galley. Once again, the ground rules demand precise performance. To avoid waste, only the needed first-class entrees are transferred to the oven. This brief flight of 90 minutes requires collection of menu choices and oven loading while the aircraft is taxiing to the runway for takeoff. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lockheed welcomes you aboard this food service test flight of the L-1011 TriStar. We are operating on the auspices of this airline that will soon be flying the TriStar in regular service. Air Canada, Air Jamaica, Delta, Eastern, and TWA. Our flight time will be one hour and 30 minutes. You may not be familiar with the interior of the TriStar, therefore we've placed a plastic card in each seat pocket. We suggest that you take a moment to look at it and note the location of the eight-door type emergency exit. After delivery of four beverage carts, the galley stewardesses remain in the cabin for takeoff. galley stewardesses return to the galley after takeoff. Remaining beverage carts are sent to the cabin. Entrees are placed in the food cart holding ovens. Meanwhile, beverage refreshments of choice are being served according to current airline practice. First class passengers are served two drinks. 
Alcohol beverage miniatures were supplied by Delta Airlines. Coach passengers can purchase two drinks. The passengers do not know that all money is to be refunded after the test. Even so, purchases far exceed those of a normal flight. Each beverage cart has a compact cobra head dispenser that supplies water and carbonated mixes. A variety of liquor miniatures are readily available in pop-up containers. Additional mixes, beverages, and supplies are carried in cart drawers. The two carts used in the first class section also carry a choice of wines. Recently available data indicate that a stewardess can serve cocktails to 25 first class passengers in 15 to 17 minutes. The time required for one stewardess to serve complimentary soft drinks or to sell the normal quantity of cocktails to 50 coach passengers is within the same general time period. Two beverage carts are returned to the galley when the service is completed. And food carts are sent to the cabin. No passenger in the eight abreast coach section is more than one seat away from a wide aisle. And what's good for the passenger is good for the stewardess. No stewardess in the wide aisle is more than one seat away from any passenger she is serving. A variation in service procedure is performed and evaluated. This stewardess prepares dinner trays on a parked cart and hand carries the trays two at a time to her passengers. This is called the satellite method, in contrast to the cart-in-aisle method. Some authorities prefer the satellite method, believing it results in less aisle congestion. The professional airline stewardesses who have participated in the Lockheed tests generally prefer the cart-in-the-aisle method, because it permits a more gracious service the hostesses have more time to socialize with the passengers. They also walk less. The tray preparation procedure is similar at all food carts. A preset cold tray is first removed from the bottom section of the cart. Next, a hot casserole is removed from the holding oven. An oven glove or tongs are important items for this step. The cover is removed from the casserole and the tray is served to the passenger. The first class cold tray food includes a shrimp and tomato salad with tangy sauce. For the coach passengers, the salad is hearts of lettuce with green goddess dressing. Cold tray food for this test was provided by Transworld Airlines. It was originally planned to carry coffee on each cart, coffee and wine on first class carts, to fill requests during meal service. However, the participating stewardesses discovered that operation of the L-1011 galley is so simple that one galley attendant is free to go to the cabin after the hot food was cooked, and the other can come up after all food carts were delivered. It was then decided that the first galley attendant can serve wine and coffee in the first class section, while the second attendant helps in the coach section. The wine and cocktail snacks served in this test were provided by Eastern Airlines. 
a backup liquor service is provided during the meal from the four beverage carts that remain secured in the cabin. These carts are available to fill requests for soft drinks or additional beer or cocktails. For the type of one-pass food service being demonstrated, one stewardess can serve 25 first-class passengers in well under 15 minutes. With a minimum cabin crew employed in this test, each stewardess in the coach section must serve 50 passengers, but 15 minutes is still a reasonable objective. During pickup and waste disposal in the first class section, the crystal, silver, china, and linen supplies are carefully handled and separated for reuse. In the coach class section, supplies are plastic and are designed to permit minimal handling. The section of the coach served by the satellite method is cleared the same way. Waste and supplies are hand carried from the passenger tables to a parked cart. It was anticipated that after dinner pickup might present a problem in terms of capacity for residue volume. but the capacity available is adequate. One stewardess is in the galley receiving carts during this operation. Carts are inspected and parked at the galley tie-down stations. After the galley is secured for landing, the stewardess returns to the cabin. Our TriStar has just landed and is taxiing to the terminal. May we take this opportunity to thank you on behalf of the participating airlines, Air Canada, Air Jamaica, Delta, Eastern, and TWA for your participation in this test. Lockheed also wishes to thank you for your splendid cooperation and hopes you enjoyed the experience. For your information, our test achieved all objectives. The test continues after the simulated landing. Two servicemen are standing by, and the galley is unloaded during the passenger deplaning. Food and beverage carts are rolled out of the galley onto the representative commissary van. A service cart is provided for the unused frozen entrees. When the cabin is cleared of passengers, one man cleans the cabin service centers. Cleaning the galley, including cabinets and ovens, completes the test. Ladies and gentlemen, this test demonstrated that the L-1011 food and beverage service system is capable of providing a gracious, unhurried dinner to 250 passengers on a brief flight with a minimum cabin crew. Unquestionably, when airline experience is applied to the matching of service levels and cabin crews on the one hand, to flight lengths and predictable passenger loads on the other hand, service will be even smoother. And we are sure that it will be commonplace for airlines operating TriStar aircraft to offer a definitely upgraded cocktail and dinner service on their 90-minute flights. The type of food service shown in the test just completed is representative of expected airline operations in coach sections of the L-1011. 
For the first class sections, however, various levels of service improvement can be developed. In the food test, 27 standard size food trays were used in each cart. An expanded first class service is available. 18 large serving trays can be used in each cart with a more spacious arrangement of the china, crystal, and silver on the preset tray. Another level of improvement can provide more abundant and sumptuous course-by-course -course service. After the expanded cocktail service, which would include hors d'oeuvre, two modularized food carts would be used in the first class section for the appetizer and salad course. A transcontinental flight would allow service over a two hour time span. Service can be as leisurely and elaborate as desired. The galley is designed for handling and cooking an unlimited variety of fine foods. Fish, fowl, and steak can be cooked simultaneously in the same oven without intermixing the delicate food flavors and aromas. The serving cart holding oven used with the modularized cart for the hot course is compatible with any type of entree cooked in the galley oven. And the galley ovens can be converted by the removal of heating elements to accommodate large items. An eight pound rib roast put into the oven raw and chilled. Top cuts of meat such as rib roast can be displayed on a carving board for individual table side service. During this hot course, the cold carts used in the salad course return to the galley. The cold carts come back to the cabin rearranged in the dessert service mode. The cart can carry individual desserts or large pastries to be cut and served on order. And with the dessert, coffee and a choice from a large variety of cordials. For the airline, the L1011 beverage and food service system is versatile, adaptable, and economical. For the passengers, it's delightful.